Greetings, and bienvenue, Midna crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. This happened a few nights ago. Driving with my mate late at night, it's around midnight with a new moon. Start leaving nicely lit roads to faster, emptier, darker back roads. We both live about 40 minutes away from where we work, so we're not taking a longer route on a fuller road. Live right where the city and suburbs meet rural ass middle of nowhere. The road is pitch black except for one street light on an intersection. See a bunch of whitish bags on the road. Uh oh. Assholes, we think, since we gotta swerve around it while turning. We start the turn and just before we swerve slightly to avoid the bags. The bags stand up. The way we made the turn was so that whatever the hell that stood up was on my side of the car. I was in the passenger seat. Before any real detail of what we saw came to us it started running in the opposite direction of where the car was going, thank Christ. But we were able to make out that it was this big white humanoid shape. In absolute fear and shock we started speeding to make as much distance between that thing and us. Despite it running away from us we looked behind ourselves the whole rest of the way home. But it was too dark to really make anything else out. Friday night, 1, 30ish a.m. Friend hits me up to go run Tuj, Mountain Street Racing, like we usually do on weekends. Heads up first because I'm pretty tired, finish waking up and getting ready, and head out around 2.30 a.m. As I'm heading up the mountain, realize it's pretty empty for the time. Usually tons of boy racers doing runs and goofing around, but halfway up still haven't seen a single car. Whatever. Time to warm up and start ramping up speed through the turns. A few turns down, hugging the inside lane tightly, when I see a car in the same lane stopped halfway in the middle of the road. Hit brakes, swerve around it, slow down, and take a closer look. Car halfway on road, halfway in ditch. Hazards flashing, all windows down. Can't see if there's anyone inside or not so park further down the road and walk down to check it out. Get closer, call out, asking if there's anyone there. No answer, so I start walking around the car and checking it out. Obviously no one inside it. Something doesn't feel right. Everything's completely silent, except for the clicking sound from the hazards blinking. Call out again, halfway through what I'm saying. Hear a really loud crunch off the road in the woods. It's a turn on the edge of the cliff, with the inside part facing the mountain, a heavily wooded ridge that's pretty much impossible to walk through, unless you possibly drove another half mile down and took the long way around walking. Get spooked, call out again. See flashlight turn on in the woods. Whoever is holding it takes a step or two toward me, then stops. Both stand there staring at each other for what seems like forever, heavy breathing. All of a sudden, whoever is holding the flashlight breaks out into a very fast, unnatural shuffling in my direction. Sounds and looks like someone disfigured doing their best impression of a jog. Freak out, run a hundred feet back to my car, reverse and start driving as fast as I can without looking back. I spend the entire rest of the ride looking into my back seat, worrying that someone's going to pop up. Get up to the meeting area at the top of the mountain. Looks like a friend just got there only a few minutes before I did, despite him heading out way earlier. Has no idea what the hell I'm talking about, which means the car must have pulled onto the road and stopped exactly a few minutes after he passed that spot on the road. Might not be too spooky of a story, but for some reason, it scared the shit out of me. Silver lining is, though, setting a record for my time that night. Never came close to driving that fast again. You should always call the cops in this situation, not for the paranormal factor, but for the fact that people use fake crash scenes to rob or kidnap bystanders who seek to help. Especially if it's in an area with not a lot of human traffic. Last year, June, around 1 a.m. Walking home from a party that went to shit, a friend that took me and a couple others there left at 10 p.m. alone. I left at midnight, since everyone else had passed out. Road has swamp and heavily forested hills on one side, 
really tall grass fields and a river on the other. Nearest houses are a ways off, nothing behind me for miles. Sit my ass down because I've been walking for a while. Contemplating sleeping outside when I realize the bullfrogs and crickets are quiet. Get nervous and look around. See nothing but feel water hit my nose. Have another drop of rain hit my cheek, followed by a crack of thunder. Stumble to my feet and keep walking. Walk for a couple more minutes. The storm is now light rain, lightning coming from the riverside of the road. Getting more and more nervous, every crack of thunder makes me jump. Start half jogging, starting to panic. The storm picks up. Can't see well from the dark and the rain, getting soaked and slipping on shitty dirt road. Hear weird sounds, like someone with the flu gurgling their phlegm and snorting. Slip and fall face first into a puddle. While I'm getting up, I hear that snorting again and feel hot air on my neck. Whip around and throw a punch, hear something crack and tear. Whatever I hit starts screaming its head off, sprint off as fast as I can. Cross a bridge, stop and catch my breath. Look behind me, see shadow taller than I am at the other side. Flash of lightning lights it up, snow white skin covered in mud, extremely thin. Dark hair that grew down to its ass and a mouth that hung limp at its left side. Hear a train horn from behind me, the thing immediately turns and runs through the swamp into the hills. Get home, sit in my basement with a gun at my side until 9 a.m. Head outside, dead fawn on my porch, four-fingered bloody prints and some symbol scratched into my door. Stay with family for a week then move out of state. Pick related, drew it and the symbol as best I could. I'm a state trooper. About seven years ago, I'm out on my usual patrol. Around October, I remember because it was getting colder out and with Halloween right around the corner. On my usual route, it's pretty peaceful actually just cruising the back roads when I get a call from dispatch. Suspicious vehicle parked off one of the main roads. A concerned citizen had spotted it and wanted to make sure nobody was hurt. Drive to the location, which is again off of a main road but still out in the sticks. I'm talking the road isn't even paved. Kind of looks like a pick related. I roll up, flash my lights, and sound my siren. It's just a car on the side of the road. I've seen it before. Could be abandoned. Could be somebody in the woods taking an emergency piss. Get closer and something just seems off. Been at the job for a while. You start to pick up on certain things that are telltale signs car is too nice and new to be abandoned. So I approach with my flashlight. It's getting to be around dusk now. I've caught people having sex, doing drugs, sleeping, etc., and there is a scramble in the car when ID approach. I see no movement. The passenger side door is open and a clutter of items like shopping bags and a purse trails out of the car into the woods. Follow, announcing loudly that I'm a state trooper and if anyone needs assistance, I'm thinking maybe it's an EDP, an emotionally disturbed person, nervous breakdown type situation. Walk into the woods, still calling out while it's getting darker out. After about 20 yards, I see a pair of legs dangling from a tree. Approach cautiously, saying I'm a trooper and I'm here to help. Shine my light up and see a young college-age girl, early 20s, up a tree. Her throat is cut, deep. I can practically see down her neck. Her body is positioned on the higher branches about five feet off the ground. Somebody placed her there. Give myself a minute to take that in. Take my gun out and still announce my presence in case there is anyone else around. I'm in DEFCON 1, as far as I'm concerned, the person that did this is still here. Walk back to my car, grab the shotgun, and go back into the woods. Screw this, if there is somebody else hurt or dying out there, I'm not sitting on my ass. Again, yelling out state police, and if anyone is there, make yourself known or I'll shoot. Nothing. Back up on its way already, I stay close to the tree line looking for anyone. On my second trip, I notice the trail from the side of the road goes into the woods a bit further a shoe, a jacket, some jewelry, etc., all leading up to the girl in the tree. Backup arrives, detectives arrive, show them everything I found and give my statements. Concerned citizen gets cleared. Turns out he was, in fact, just a concerned citizen. No other suspects. Case is still unsolved. The part that really messed with my head is checking her phone records, she made a call to her parents saying she had car trouble not even two hours before that. She parked on the side of the road and waiting for somebody to pick her up. 
Some stranger stopped, jumped her and killed her and just left right before I got there. I dispatch for highway patrol in my state. Whenever I train new people, I tell them, always send a trooper, or at least a deputy, to check on disabled motorists for exactly this reason, especially if they're women. I'm all for female equality, but the fact of the matter is that there is still shit out there that's not safe for women. Sitting in a car, alone, at night, is not safe. Especially on an interstate highway where you have all kinds of drivers who are only driving through the state for a few hours and will never be back again. People don't realize how easy it is to get away with murder. Reminds me of a story my friend told me. A friend of mine is a paramedic in a big city. Gets a call about a fight. Sounds like somebody is getting fucked up and possibly murdered. Drives out to a known sketchy area, aka Da Hood. Lots of abandoned buildings and known violent crimes. After the initial confusion of where the victims are, he has to wait until the police clear the scene and deem it safe. Sitting outside of an abandoned motel, feeling anxious. A car slows down and then drives off, clearly not wanting any of this. The cops clear the scene and he and his partner go to a very much dead victim. Young women, all slashed up across her face and body. Two weeks later, detectives arrest her boyfriend for it, saying they were having money disputes and he figured it was easier to kill her. During the interview with the detectives, he walks them through the night's events and mentions after stabbing her, he took off around the block and saw an ambulance. Gave legitimate thought to killing them just in case they saw him, but he decided against it when he heard the cops' sirens. Friend is still shaken up by it and doesn't like to talk about it. Hell. I've heard of something similar to this. An officer was driving on the highway or a road at 2 a.m., and saw something shining in the woods that led to a dead woman hanging from a tree with her throat cut. The shining thing in the woods turned out to be her bracelet or some other jewelry. Nothing special, but might as well share. A random Friday night a few years ago. Chilling, playing video games and watching a movie with my cousin. It's after 3.30am so I gave him a ride home. My little town of about 2,000 people is totally empty, not a single car on the road. After a turn, there's a man standing at the edge of the road smoking under a streetlight. He's sort of hiding behind the telephone pole. It's clear we see him, and he looks right at us intently. Drop cousin off, on my way back. The smoking guy wasn't there so I forgot about it. See a white van cross the road in front of me. See the same white van a couple minutes later, driving slowly. Take a different route home. Get closer to home, and as I turn near my house, the same white van pulls behind me with its brights on. I start getting paranoid, decide to pull off in front of somebody else's house on a different street and wait for them to pass. After they passed, I pulled into my driveway and pulled up far enough that it wasn't visible from the road. See them drive by sort of slowly about an hour later as if they were looking for something. Keep my rifle and shotgun close by for a few days. Rationally, it was probably nothing, but it freaked me out at the time. I'm awake most nights and I've seen some odd looking people walking around in the middle of the night. First year in college, I met a girl that I wanted to date. We hit it off and a few dates later, I suggested we go to Yosemite. We had a great time doing valley tourist stuff and meeting up with some Spanish tourists. Both guys and we are having a good time swapping stories about hiking and general differences between the USA and Spain. It gets later than I wanted to be there since it's a couple hours drive home. Didn't plan on staying the night. They offer us a place to crash in their cabin or tent or whatever I can't remember now. I decline, they insist. My lady friend gets a bad vibe, mutters under her breath, don't. I decline again politely say our goodbyes. They ask what kind of car I'm driving. Old Coupe de Ville from the 80s. My pride and joy. They want to see it because they have a cheap rental and I show it off. One of them sits on the driver's side while the other one is talking to me. Finally say goodbye and wish them a good time in America. This is where it gets weird. Driving up and out of the valley, my lights start going on and off. First time it happened, my lady friend said that it wasn't funny. I look at her and say that wasn't me. We drive another minute or two and the lights are cut out. Nearly pitch black because the small yellow lamp next to the main lights are still working. Can only see 20 feet in front of me. 
steep winding road in darkness. The only bit of luck is that the mountain was on our side of the road. Lights would flicker on for a brief moment and then cut out again. Finally, make it to the end of the road where there is a motel. We stop and I say I'm going to get a room. In the light of the parking lot I see there are wires coming out of the steering wheel. Someone pulled the wires out and I didn't notice it when I got there. WWTF. Think back to the two guys where one sat in the driver's seat where the other guy pulled my attention away to chat. Tell my lady friend to get into the motel while I move the car away from the street where it can't be seen. Get a room. Bunk beds only and over 100 bucks for a broke college student. Tell her about the wires hanging out of the steering column. She freaks out and asks me to sleep in the same tiny bed as her. I stay up most of the night, get up the next day and drive home. Never saw the two Spaniards again, but I felt like they were going to find us on the side of the road waiting for morning. I have no idea what they intended, but that's my story. I lived in Australia for a couple years. I worked on a farm in the middle of nowhere. Australian rural roads are horrifying. No phone signal, miles long, and absolutely no light. For my first job in Australia, the guy who I worked for was a widower. His wife had died by swerving off one of these roads and bleeding out slowly by herself. When they found her, it was way too late. So I had a great impression of these things. Anyway, going to the farm one morning, about 3 or 4 a.m., about three-fourths of the way there, the car breaks down. Try and get it working, but cannot do shit with the lack of light. Decide to wait until dawn, which isn't too far off. Get a sleeping bag out of the boot and try to get some sleep on the back seat. Drifting off at this point, and a truck really slowly pulls up next to me. Legitimately, all I'm thinking is how I'm going to be murdered and have my body dumped in the outback. Tap on the window, here and all right, mate because it was one of the lads from the farm on his way back. Drives me up to the farm and we sort out the car later. Good times. I have one that I hate telling because every time I do it creeps me out for the entire night afterwards, working mobile security. Mid 2010. Had a patrol of some housing project that was kind of abandoned after the housing crash of 2009. About 250 houses, some fully completed, some half done, some just foundation, etc. Absolutely nobody is living there because LOL economy, on the side of a mountain that has nobody on it during the night. Had to do it eight times a night, and it took about 15 minutes every time. Would drive through and scan a bunch of barcodes to prove I was there. It was a weird system. Listening to some talk radio, doing my last patrol of the night. About 3 a.m. I got off work at 5, so I was going to finish this and go take a nap somewhere until 5. Halfway through, I got out of my car and immediately got a creepy vibe, hair standing up on the back of my neck. No moon, pitch black, locking a gate, and just had my rear lights and hazards flicking on and off illuminating the road. Middle of a forest, literally no cars or any sounds besides the muffled radio. I just stand there and take in the setting for about 20 seconds, quickly lock the gate and shuffle back to my car. Forget about the vibe on my last checkpoint, excited to get out of there and go home. Road switch back so it's about 100 meters up from where the gate was. Feels like a long drive, but not too far geographically. Get out of my car to scan the point there. Hear something that sounds like a rock or brick falling onto concrete from inside a house across the road. Look in the direction. Eyes start adjusting to the light, but still can't see anything. All the houses in this area were just framed in concrete, like pick-related. Meh. I don't really give a damn there's nothing in the area to steal anyways. Figure it's probably just a raccoon. Scan the point and head back to my car. Hear what sounds like the pitter-patter of hooves. Okay, what the hell would that be? Pull my flashlight out of my pocket. Not a nice LED one like the new ones these days, so a pretty shitty beam. Scan it across the building. Don't see anything. Scan back again. Chill runs down my spine. Hair stands up on my neck. Some creepy ass face looking directly at me, peering around one of the concrete pillars. Had a huge grinning mouth, big white eyes with tiny pupils, long stringy black hair, sickly looking gray skin, thin face and neck. 
looking at me with kind of a curious smile. Keep my light pinned on it, kind of questioning my sanity at this point. It blinks. No, I'm not just seeing shit at this point. Full sprint back to my car. Slam it into reverse. Spin around. Headlights go back across the building where it was looking at me from. See, it just has one eye around the pillar now, still looking at my car. Floor it out of there. Never saw it or anything like it again for the next four months I worked there, but every time I was scanning that checkpoint, the hair would still stand up on the back of my neck. Driving around a certain large city in western North Carolina at night, go onto the parkway, stop at an overlook of a river to chill out and listen to the flow of water, turn off car lights and roll down windows since the moon was pretty bright already. Nobody was on the parkway, I mean nobody, during the 30 minutes I was driving on it prior. 30 seconds after I stop a car pulls behind me, headlights on, out of nowhere. Not 10 seconds after that, another car pulls out of nowhere in front of me, turns headlights on figures get out of the cars, start approaching mine, screw this dot JPEG, slam foot on gas, hightail it out of there. Still creeps me out thinking about it. Someone I know heard from a park ranger that apparently married men have hookups. Sometimes on the parkway at night would not surprise me, but either way, my sphincter was 100% clenched. I'll play with a few friends in high school. It's around 12 or one in the morning. Five of us, three sitting in the back of a pickup, myself and two girls, two other guys in the front. Going through the woods and trails on the edge of town in the dark in the truck. No radio playing, all casually chatting. Driver asshole friend keeps cutting the lights off and stopping the truck making us all instinctively sit lower in the bed because it's pitch black. Goes on for a while, does it maybe three or four times last time? Cuts the engine completely. As soon as the engine cuts, it sounds like something is rushing through the woods straight for us. The engine starts back up. The truck lurches forward with a metallic clang in the back. All three of us slide back towards the tailgate. Good 30 to 60 seconds of high speed and turns followed by acceleration. We are getting thrown around. Finally pull into a gas station. Driver looks terrified. When he started the truck back, there was a person off to the side of the truck about to climb in. They made eye contact in the mirror. Metallic clang in the bed of the truck was a buck knife that belonged to whoever it was trying to get in. How the ever-loving fuck does a buck knife pierce a truck? Get out of here with that role play shit. Not the guy you're responding to, but the answer is fairly easily. Modern automobiles are like tinfoil. You can easily punch a hole in one with a sharp implement. The assaulting party was attempting to climb into the truck bed and apparently dropped the knife in when the truck started moving again. Said individual either fell off then or was shaken loose while the driver initiated OP, get the fuck off my truck. Knife was then discovered when they stopped at the gas station. Well, this isn't really a driving story, but it's a road story. Be 15 or 16 years old. I live in a densely wooded area in Alabama. Four buddies and I love going out in the woods at night with flashlights and exploring the paths behind our house. This time we walked really far. We literally just keep walking further down the path because we are dreading the walk back having a great time. Try to scare each other by turning off our flashlights and pretending the batteries are dead eventually make it into a hunting area. Signs around say, hog heaven. The path has gone from really dark and curvy to straight and more clear. We walk down the path until we come to a crossroads decide to take a break and find out where the hell we are exactly. Me and one buddy are standing while the others are sitting together on the road looking at the map. Suddenly hear 100% clearly a woman laugh from the thick trees beside the crossroads. He 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 he. Sounds corny but that's what it sounded like. Three he's from in the forest. It was like the laugh you'd hear the stereotypical witch make on TV. Friend and I exchanged wide stares at each other. You heard that too. Other friends heard nothing at all. They were right beside us and nobody was even talking. How the hell did they not hear it too? We still talk about it sometimes. It's the only paranormal encounter I've ever had. Actually gives me goosebumps just typing it out because of thinking how dumb we were walking that far out into the woods without telling anyone. Great times with friends though.
I only recently found out crossroads are apparently related to supernatural things. So I live in a quiet, secluded area of New York, and the story goes. Mom and I are in a car in the middle of winter, driving on a stretch of road with really only one house. Less than five minutes walk from our house. About six in the morning, no other car on the road except ours. It's not even dark, the sun is coming up. In front of us, clear as day, not even treetop high. A light blue orb moves from one side of the road to the other. The closest anomaly I can find to match it is ball lightning, but even that is way off. The thing is in a field on the left side of the road, gets to the road, moves fast as shit across it, then slows again once it's crossed, as if it knew to cross the road fast. It disappears into the woods. I rubbed my eyes and looked at my mom and asked her if she just saw that too. She asked me what the hell that thing was. Still kind of bummed we didn't stop to observe this shit more, but we both saw it so I'm certain it was real. It was glowing. It got to a whitish color towards its center. It was quite solid in how the color faded. Easily the weirdest thing I have ever seen to date. A few years later I was telling the story to someone, and they were freaked out because their dad had seen something similar high in the sky. I am certain it was not ball lightning. Pick kinda related. I don't much believe in the paranormal either. More of a science guy. Be six or seven year old me, moving from Oregon to Las Vegas driving under the stars somewhere in southern Nevada with mom and either my grandma or a friend of my mom's. Not sure which. Driving along a long straight road with no other cars in sight. Suddenly a single bright light appears down the road and everyone immediately notices it. It's getting closer. We start getting nervous. Close enough to the car where we should be able to make out a shape. We can't. Mom, audibly getting kinda panicked, starts to ask, what the hell is that? It looks like it's going to fly right into the car. We all start screaming. It just vanishes just before reaching us. The weird part is, I don't remember any of this. I'm telling the story based on what my mom told me a couple years later after asking me about it. You'd think that someone would remember something like that. Just makes me uneasy. My dad was a truck driver. He mostly worked for citrus companies going and picking up trailers full of oranges and grapefruit. I couldn't have been much more than seven or eight when this happened. It was the late 80s, in the middle of nowhere in central Florida, driving down a dirt road to find a trailer full of fruit. Dad, older cousin who's way more badass than me, me, don't know how long we're driving for. It's like 11 p.m. and I'm a kid and I want to go eat nuggets or whatever the hell I did as a kid. All of a sudden, two people laying on the sides of the opposite sides of the dirt road, blood caked dirt all around, some car up ahead with headlights facing us just sitting. You know how dirt roads get graded and leave that hump to the side? These people were sort of folded over it. If they were alive, it wasn't fun or comfortable. Cousin says we have to help them I'm just curious. No idea what could be happening, Dad knows. And we back out of there and turn around immediately. Radio's dispatch and says no go from what I know he didn't call the police either. But that's probably because it would be basically impossible in the middle of nowhere. A few years back, about six or so, friend's acquaintance gets a new truck, goes driving with his GF, Said acquaintance comes by and picks friend up, I come along for the ride. Stick to country roads because screw speed limits. Four hours, no other vehicles. Stop at the gas station, fill up around four jerry cans of gas. Drive out to Sandylands. Continue driving around. Another truck on the side of the road, all blinkers on. Slow down, stop alongside, take one look at the cabin. Guns everywhere, windshield's been shot out, there is no passenger door, everybody is confused. Hear a series of gunshots out in a woods, followed by noises of something moving through the brush real fast. Open the window in the back of the cab, shout to the driver and GF to GTFO. Gas, gas, gas. We tear out of there, down a straightaway. Two guys come running out of woods, jump into another truck, kick up a shitload of gravel as they punch it. They gain on us. Driver stomps on brakes. We hit the cab. Friend almost falls out of truck bed as our truck fishtails onto a different road. Other truck passes by the road behind us. A minute later, it's back. 
sun's going down. This continues for a while, racing down back roads pursued by actual hicks. Friend finally has enough of this shit and chunks a jerry can at them. They fucking run over it, no explosion, friend shouts. Hollywood fucking lied, WTEF. Nightfall, still driving, suddenly the driver turns onto the side path and off the road, kills the engine. They roar right the fuck past. We wait, listening for the sound of the other truck to fade away, no other noises. Friend gets squirrely, I join him in the feeling. Open up another jerry can, top up the truck. Hairs on the back of my neck rising, close jerry can, place in back, hop into the cab. Friend remains in the truck bed, now wielding tire iron. Engine starts up, we back up onto the main road. We are fucking lost, X. I suggest using sat phone to call for help. Don't have registration for the vehicle. Put the sat phone away. Start driving. Three hours later, we see something up ahead. Pull up on that truck only in the fucking ditch. Stop next to it to look. Nobody inside. Inside is a mess. The driver's side window is smashed. There's blood all over that side of the car. Misfire? A friend hops out of the truck bed, the rest of us WTF at him, walks over, opens the truck door, which promptly falls off in his hands. WTF once more, seeing too much fucking blood on the seat. A friend reaches in, loots a beer from under the pedals. Tosses the door in the back before climbing into the cab. Mine now. Start driving away. Eventually get back onto the main road, head home. Drive back to friend's place, park the truck in the garage. Hey, mind if I store it here for a few days? Sure. Go have drinks and sit around a campfire complaining about random shit for the rest of the night. A friend still has that blood-stained beer can, unopened. Lost the truck door when he got kicked out of the house. I still don't know WTF those Hicks issue was. The prevailing theory is they were still in those woods. And during their pursuit, a passenger accidentally let a shot off in the cab, either injuring or killing the driver. The truck went into a ditch and the passenger stumbled off into the woods. An acquaintance is forever complaining that he should have looted one of the rifles, too. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes midnight central time.